Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Thursday Live, coaches. How y'all doing today? How's it going, guys? Welcome. Who's excited for the live today? I'm excited. Today we're talking about the five deadly sins that keep you from attracting clients right now. These are the five things I guarantee if you're not attracting clients consistently, these are the five things that you're doing and you're doing at least one of them. So one of these is gonna be relatable to you. Grab something to drink, grab a tea or a coffee, a decaf coffee, right? Grab something to sip on, get your notebook out because we're gonna take some notes. I guarantee you, one of these is going to be relatable to you, all right? And they're usually things, these are going to be things that you might not even know you're doing that are keeping you from attracting clients right now. So leave me a comment if you're joining me and you're on here, say hello. Let me know you can hear me. Let me know you're ready to rock and roll. Leave me a tea emoji or a glass of wine. If you're having a glass of wine tonight, let me know. Leave me a glass of wine emoji if that's what you're doing. Let me know what you're joining me with tonight. And who's ready to learn so we can figure out how to stop repelling those clients and start attracting to them to us now. Let me know if that's something you guys want to hear about. Hello, Belinda. Welcome. Yay, I'm so happy you're joining me, Belinda. I'm so excited to be working with you. Yay. Let me know if you got your welcome email and all that stuff. Hey, Michelle. I see your wine emoji. I love it. I love it. Who else is settled in for this training tonight? It's going to be really exciting because when we know what things are repelling clients and we know the things that we're doing that are keeping us from attracting clients, then the opposite can be true. We can start attracting clients to us right now. And so that's what we all want. How many of us would like to be signing more clients every single day or every single week, or at least signing them weekly consistently? Let me know if that is you. Give me a heck yes, let's do this. And let me know. And I'm gonna start with the most obvious one that I think all of us have or have had at some point, especially in the beginning, that keeps us from attracting clients. I'm gonna start with the, like the most kind of like overarching thing that we do that keeps us from attracting clients. Who's ready for it? Number one, type a one in the comments. If you're ready for number one, you have your notebook out and you have your your favorite pen, you've got your little drink or a snack with you, type a one in the comments if you're ready to hear the most common thing that keeps you from attracting clients right now. That's the very reason that if nobody reached out to you today, the reason why. For 95% of coaches, who's ready? I want to see some ones in the comments if you guys are ready. So I know you have your notebooks ready. You're ready to write this stuff down. The number one reason why you're not attracting clients right now. If nobody reached out to you today, this is going to be one of the reasons. All right. It was ready. Belinda. Belinda's got a one. Belinda's ready. Awesome. Who else? This is so important, and I don't want any of you to skip over this because um, and just write this off as like silly or obvious. Like this is this is like the underarching root of the problem. And if I tell you the other five things and you don't address this one, none of it matters. Okay. This is at the root of it. If clients aren't coming to you, you're not attracting clients right now. The only reason. The number one root problem, if you haven't addressed this, that will keep clients from coming to you is not believing that you can help people right now. Not believing that you can help people right now. 
And you might say, hey, Valerie, like, I believe I can help people. Like, I know I can help them. But in the back of your mind, there's a part of you that doesn't know if you can, like, help them enough, right? You're like, I don't know if I have, like, all of, like, the scientific training yet. Like, I, you know, don't know if I know, like, the science behind it. Like, what if they want me to explain, like, the science behind everything? Or what if... I think I can help them and I mean it when I tell them I can help them. And then once I start working with them, I realize it was like more complicated and there was like something else. And then they feel like I misled them and, you know, I told them I could help them and what if I can't, right? How many of you guys ever worry about that kind of stuff? Let me know I'm not the only person who ever worried about that ever with a client. Like, I don't want to like... I don't want to sound like I'm promising too much with what I'm saying because what if like I think I can help them and I can't, right? What if you have, you know, if you're a mom that helps kids and you yourself have helped, you know, helped yourself and you've been through that same journey with your own kids and you're like, I know I can help moms with this. I've been in their shoes. I know exactly how to help them. But then at the same time, in the back of your head, you also have that voice that's like, well, what if their kid's just like a little bit different than mine? What if he doesn't respond to the same things that worked for me and that I know how to help people with? And there's that that small belief, and this is what I mean by not believing you can help people. It doesn't mean that like you have zero belief. Maybe you have some belief and you're like, I do know I can help people. That's what I want to do. But you have that nagging voice in the back of your head that's like, but what if like you're wrong with this one and you can't be super confident and certain that you can help them? This is the number one. And this is why I'm giving it to you first. Like I'm not holding back. I'm not giving you the fluff. This is the number one reason. It doesn't matter what strategy you use, what your marketing funnel looks like. It doesn't matter how you put together your package and your message. If that voice is there, you are not attracting the clients to you that you could be. There are clients that are looking for you right now who are not finding you because that will affect, right? If we look at the model, if you have that thought in your head, that what if thought, like I want to say this really bold statement that about what I do and how amazing the transformation is that's available to the people that I work with, but I not like 100% certain about that. Like I'm like what, like 90% certain this is amazing, but I don't want to be too out there and be super certain because there's that 10%. And what if that 10% signs up with me and I feel really horrible and they don't get results? That thought will make you feel uncertain to the point where it affects the way you show up and it affects the clients coming to you. Believe me on this. Everybody write this down, okay? Write number one down on your notebook, okay? Not believing you can help people. And I want you all to check in with this every single day. If you are not doing this every single day, where you have a part of your routine every morning, where you tell yourself why you're choosing to believe on purpose, that your transformational coaching is the best out there and it's the best thing for the person that needs it and is looking for it right now, if you're not intentionally choosing that and focusing your brain and telling your brain what to believe, your brain is going to go out there and believe all kinds of things, right? Our brains are designed to to keep us safe and we, they also want to think of like the worst case scenario. They're like, yeah, you, you that's great that you think you can help people, but it's also possible that you might not be very good at it and you might not get any clients and you know, you can't really be sure that it's going to be as amazing as you want it to be, right? We have to be intentional about what we choose to believe because not believing you can help people is a choice. Believing that you can help people on purpose is also a choice. We just have to practice doing it every single day. And I don't care if you do it every morning or if you do it at night when you set your intention for the next day. I recommend doing it as often as possible. Okay, so if you only have time to stay for one thing and you only write down one point, that's one that I want you to walk away with, okay? That is mistake number one that 
we don't even realize is happening because we think we do believe when we don't realize we have these beliefs that are not us believing we can help people. Okay, so everybody do an audit on your beliefs and where you've been focusing your intentions. That's number one, all right? Number two, everybody, number two in the comments. Number two, all right? This is another one that happens, but it happens as a result of number one, and it's how it shows up in what we actually do. Who's ready for this? I, I wanna know how many of you guys relate to this because I'm telling you the things Every single one of these five things is me, just so you know. And so I want to know that I'm not the only one that has done this before. So everybody write number two in the comments if you want to hear the second thing that you're actually doing. So number one is not believing you can help people, like intentionally practicing the belief, like choosing on purpose to believe with intentionality that you can help people. Number two, as a symptom of number one, okay, is chasing shiny objects instead of sales. Okay, chasing shiny objects. What does that look like in our business when we chase shiny objects? Well, if you think about it, what does it look like for our clients when they do that? Do they do that all the time or what? Think about what your clients are doing when they're trying to solve their problem. What are your clients doing? They are, so if your clients are trying to lose weight, and they want to make a lifestyle change, what are they doing? Are they committing to something that's going to create lasting transformation in their life and focusing on making some solid habit changes in the way that they think every day and the way that they act, what they choose to believe? Are they thinking like, okay, what do I need to do today? Oh, I, I failed at that yesterday. What's the thing I'm going to do today? And they're out there and they're like looking in groups and they're like looking on forums and they're going to Pinterest and they're watching YouTube videos and they're doing all of the things to find the next thing right? What do we do as coaches? If we have this belief, like number one is not believing you can help people and you have that like shadow of a doubt in your mind that maybe you don't, you're not ready or you don't have it figured out or you don't know how to find them, your brain goes and it tries to solve for that with a bunch of, yes, exactly, Belinda, a bunch of different things and not committing to one. Your brain goes and looks for tries to solve for that problem. It's like, oh, I just don't know what I'm doing. I'm very confused about all this. Let me go research everything and sign up for like 10 webinars this week and like download like a bunch of information that I can't possibly get through. Chasing shiny objects. And what does that create in your business? Does that create that confidence that you can help people and that your clients are out there looking for you right now? Or does it create the belief that you are just more lost than you even knew you were, right? Does that create more clarity in your mind? Or does it create confusion and feeling lost and overwhelmed? And like, you're definitely not ready. There is way too much. Like at, the more you look, the more you realize that is out there and the more you realize you don't know right? Chasing those shiny objects. And what it is, is it's like that way of like looking for that external thing to create the belief inside of you that you're ready to get clients right now. You're ready to help people now. And so it's a way of buffering with that emotion that's uncomfortable, that shadow of a doubt that's very uncomfortable. Hey, Kristen, it's a way of, um, I'm, of diverting that and, and pushing away that negative emotion and that doubt by like, I'm just gonna focus on figuring this out and I'm gonna go like look at this right now, right? Instead of, when I say instead of sales, I mean instead of making offers to people, the people that are like right there in front of you, right in front of your face, but your brain is like not recognizing it as the problem and is like searching for all these other things and there's people right there in front of you who would be like, so happy and crying tears of joy if you were there right in front of them, being intentional, believing that you can help them, and making them an offer to help them with that conviction, with that certainty, and with that belief, right? And that comes from having that deep focus, that focus on that one method and not being chasing all of those shiny objects right? Not being everywhere with your attention, having that constraint with your attention, right? Right. Focusing on like that one method, like where are my clients? Like I don't need to be the encyclopedia of every single thing that could happen. I don't need to have it all prepared. 
and to feel ready. And I don't need to chase all the shiny objects to know that I can make an offer to somebody. Focus on the sales instead of chasing the shiny objects. So who can relate to that? Who has done that? Please tell me I'm not the only one who has gone down the rabbit hole of chasing all the shiny objects and trying to do all of the research on all of the things and then just feeling completely even more overwhelmed and bogged down by everything I just attracted into my life and created by my going after all these different shiny objects like squirrel, squirrel brain. I really, I don't know if there is a squirrel emoji, but if you can find a squirrel emoji, leave me a squirrel emoji if you've ever had squirrel brain trying to figure out how to attract clients. All right. So that's number two. Number one is not believing you can help people. Number two is chasing all of the shiny objects instead of making offers and sales and enrolling those clients. All right. Number three. And this is a big one. This is one of the things that we work on in OCI a lot with um, our message and what we're putting out into the world and how we're packaging with clarity. Number three, and this is a big reason why clients are not attracted to you, is being inspirational. Being inspirational. And this might sound like a good thing. You know, so many times we're told by gurus, like, just be inspirational. Why would someone come to you? Well, they're because they're inspired by you. That's why they want to work with you because you're just so inspirational. But I really want you to think about this for a second. How many times have you had someone who has reached out to you or like left a nice comment on your post or liked your post and was like, oh, that was so inspirational. Thank you so much. This is so inspiring. But they're not actually reaching out to you and saying, hey, how can we coach together? Hey, I think I need to hear about your coaching program. How can we, like, what, how do I learn more? How do I, what's take the next step with you, right? So there's a difference between being inspirational and compelling somebody to need your help to make a change in their life, right? There is a huge inspir a difference between inspirational and being compelling. So what is the difference? So being inspirational is just like saying things that make people feel good. Like, um, you know, I'm trying to think of an example, like one of those inspirational posts. It's like, you know, you just got to start, you know, day one, you know, start day one. So everybody has it starts on a different chapter. Don't compare yourself to other people. Like, keep going. You got this, girl. Anything that's very, like, cheerleader it, that's inspirational. And this can happen in what you say, like in terms of your marketing, but even just if someone sends you an email, what you respond back to them in the email, or if someone leaves you a comment, what you write back in your comment, if you are like cheerleading them and being like inspirational, you are not, you're putting a band-aid on their problem. You're making them think that they don't really need to make a change that bad, like they're got this but you're not actually helping them get the transformation that they need so badly, right? You're like putting a Band-Aid on their bleeding artery by being like, oh, it's okay, you got this, just start today. And they don't know what to do. That's why they need a coach. So they don't need the coach to just be inspirational and make them feel like they got it when they don't got it, right? So take a look at the stuff and this is just all so that we can grow and become better, but take a look at your content and what you've put out there in terms of your marketing and what you've said. And it could be in, in like conversations and messages if someone's reached out to you, or it could just be like what you're putting out there in your marketing. Is it inspirational? And it's like just making them feel good. Like, hey, you're just one step away from like the rest of your life being amazing and making them feel really good, which is nice. And that's because you have this amazing heart, but it's not solving their problem. It's not compelling them to make the transformation that they need so badly, but they don't know how to make on their own, right? We need to compel them to get them to see from a different perspective why they need help and what it would look like on the other side of this problem, right? So number one, Who's keeping notes? Who knows what my number one is? Number one, not believing you can help people, which is at the root of everything else, right? Chasing shiny objects, which is what we do when we don't feel like we know how to help people yet and we don't really believe we even know where to find clients. We just start trying to solve for that negative emotion by buffering and going down all these like 
uh, squirrel brain, rabbit trail, right? All of that. That's number two. And then number three is being inspirational, being inspirational. Number four, this is also part of your marketing. This is something that's going to keep you from attracting clients. Um, on the flip side of being inspirational is just being wishy-washy, being wishy-washy with your message. How you know this is you if you fall into this category of being wishy-washy with your message is if you are afraid that you will lose somebody if you say something too direct, right? That you're afraid that you're going to lose somebody if you um, speak to one specific person and try to solve that one specific person's life and, and describe their life and their problems to a T, that there's gonna be other people out there that you could help because you, you have this big heart and you can help everybody, but you might lose those people if you don't make it sure everybody knows that like it's broad and it speaks to everyone, right? This can fall into the category of just being vague, like too vague or too general, right? If it isn't potent and powerful, People aren't paying attention. And the clients that need you right now don't even realize that they just missed you. And they're, they're looking for the giant flag. They're looking for someone to be waving a giant flag like, hey, I'm over here. This is where your solution is. There's help for you. It's right here. But if you're being vague or general, it's not that they are trying to ignore you. It's just that they're, it's hard for their brain to see you. It's not giving them the clarity. So being narrow, like narrowing down the type of person you're speaking to, right? We talk about like niching down all the time, right? We've heard that a million times over. Being narrow with the type of person that you can get results for is going to help them have the 100% clarity that you are the one who can help them, right? It's not enough for us to have clarity. We have clarity. We know who we can help. We're like, we, we get it. We, we think we're being clear, but if they don't have 100% clarity from your message, you lost them. They're gone. They, they're, they're moving on. They've got 10 more notifications that just popped up on their phone, right? And so you have this short amount of time to be clear and potent with your message. So take a look at what you're saying. Is it general? Is it vague? Is it wishy-washy? Is it just speaking to like generic like tips? It's like, here's some healthy food. Here's my plate, my salad, and why it's so great to get micronutrients every day. Or, you know, here's all the pros and cons of like, you know, high cholesterol, right? If your message isn't potent in terms of speaking to like the problem they have in their life, like what they're actually dealing with today, right? What their brain is thinking about, what they're struggling with, why it's, why it's terrible to have, for example, high cholesterol. Why do they care today? What are they doing today because of it? Like, did they have Cheerios for breakfast? How is it affecting them? If you're not getting that clear and your message is just wishy-washy and vague, they've moved on. They missed you and they need you so badly. They're actually looking for you right now and they don't even know that they just missed you. So that's number four, wishy-washy with the message, wishy-washy. So this comes down to being super clear about who you're talking to, super clear about who that one type of person is that's looking for you right now and talk to them. Your clients will come to you and they will be attracted to you when they see you waving the giant flag, when they see you speaking right to them. And the best way, if you're not sure if you're being clear enough and you think you might be wishy-washy and you're like, I don't know what to say, I want to speak to them, but I'm not sure if I'm being like clear and direct enough, is to be intentional about talking to them. Like go out and find the people that, like write down five people today that you think of as like that perfect person that you're trying to speak to. And they don't have to be someone you're making an offer to, they don't have to be your client, but just come up with five people you can think of and go talk to them and, you know, just tell them you're trying to get to know um, your, you're trying to get to know more about, you're doing some research on X, Y, Z, and you would love to chat with them about it. Maybe take them out, you know, like meet with them over a zoom call. I almost said take them out for coffee, but I don't know if we're doing that yet. 
but you'd love to meet with them and just chat with them and um, hear more about them. People love to talk about themselves. And so if you're listening and you're that listening ear, they will be, be so appreciative. And at the same time, they're giving you all of the goals you need to be attracting those clients to you. All right. So if you're not attracting them to you, take a look at your message. Is it wishy-washy or is it direct? Is it potent? Is it like speaking directly to the roadmap that that person needs to get from point A to point B. All right. Who is with me on all four of these points? Are you guys leave me a yes in the comment if you are taking notes. So I know that this is valuable for you. And I know that um, you guys are staying with me on all these points. Let me know who has all four points written down on a notepad somewhere, somewhere in your noggin. You're taking notes. All right, this is the last point, and this is kind of like three sub points to this point. So it could be, you could be falling into any one of these categories, but we all have this. I have this, you have this, this is what makes us human, this is totally normal. And number five, the reason why you're not attracting clients to you right now is because you are, what? What do you think I'm going to say? You are too attached. You are too attached. And there's multiple ways you can be attached, right? You can be attached to the way that you get clients, right? So not even seeing the clients over here because you're like, there's nobody here that's my client. I already know this. I'm like trying to find out like all these other ways to get clients. So you're too attached to the way so that there's someone right here who's like kind of like not super confident, Maybe like they, they're maybe intimidated to reach out and ask for help, but they're like kind of over here like, hey, like paying attention, like interested, would totally love a coach, but they're just scared to like reach out and raise their hand and say yes, and you're not even seeing them, right? So that's being too attached to the way that clients come to you, right? Um, being too attached to the person, right? So we talked about being specific with who you talk to online, but then you're also going to have people who come to you through that message and like, wow, like, um, yeah, I can totally help you. I didn't even like think that you, like I would be attracting you and you don't even know specifically who all is going to resonate with that. There's people that you think need your message. And then there's the other people that you don't even know of yet who also are going to resonate with that and totally need you. But you're like so focused and you're so like, this is like, narrowed down on your niche and you're like, my niche is so important. They've got to be this exact type of person that if somebody comes to you and they're like a little bit different than that mold, they, they really need the help and they resonated with a lot of the stuff you said. And they're over here like, I totally love this coach. I love everything in her marketing. She's totally speaking directly to me. Like I need this girl. She can help me. And you're like, not even seeing her like, Oh, wait a minute. That's not who I was imagining in my brain. Like this is not the exact right person. And what happens is, and I used to do this all of the time, you guys, what happens is how you know that you're doing this is that someone is like right there wanting to get on a consult with you and you'll like sabotage it. And what I would do is I would just like sabotage getting on consults with them. I would like forget to get back to them or, you know, um, another way that this will show up is like if you have consoles lined up and then something always comes up and you're like rescheduling on them or canceling it, right? That's a symptom that something's going on there and you could be too attached to the way they came to you or too attached to the person and you've already judged them. Like they're not your client. Like they're for sure not going to be committed. Like maybe you read something they posted somewhere and you're like, oh, they're not even looking for this transformation. They're still looking for like, you know, like quick fix, or they're just looking for gadgets or whatever you, they, you know, whatever your brain goes to when you're worried that they're not going to be that perfect fit who's like really committed and you already decide ahead of time before you talk to them and have a consult like, oh, they're not that person because you're like too attached to how they need to come to you and like what they need to say before you make them an offer, before you even get on a consult. It's like, oh, no, they said they're on, like, a tight budget. Like, oh, for sure, she's not going to be a good fit for my program. I have a high-ticket program. You know, I better let her know before so I don't waste her time. Like, all of these different things that our brain does 
that it, what it is, it's protecting you from, you know, pain. It's protecting you from feeling like you wasted your time or feeling rejected or drained or any type of negative emotion. If you're sabotaging be by being too attached to the way the clients are coming to you or too attached to who that person is and judging them ahead of time, you're keeping the clients from being attracted to you. You're like literally repelling money, right? The third way that you can be too attached, right? The first way is you're too attached is to the way they come to you. The second way you're too attached is who that person is and judging them ahead of time. What's the third way that we can be too attached and it keeps us from attracting clients? What do you guys think it is? This is probably the most obvious one. I saved it for last. What's the third way that you can be too attached to signing the clients and it keeps you from attracting the clients right now? The third way. Is anybody gonna guess it? Probably, probably not. Too attached to the way, too attached to the person, and too attached to the outcome. Too attached to the outcome. What does this look like? This is like the flip side, right? If somebody reaches out to you or comes through your marketing funnel and signs up and books a call with you, right? Like what we teach in the OCI, you get that person who's booked a consult with you. They came through your funnel. They've filled out an application. They're ready to talk to you. And you're like, oh my gosh, they've got to become a client. Oh my gosh, my first one all week, they've got to become a client. That's being way too attached to the outcome right? You want to be low attachment to that person, right? If they're your person, you're going to make them an offer, right? We still got to find out if we can help them and if they're a good fit at this point in their life for what we have to offer. But if we're like super attached and we're like, I've got to get clients, like this is like my last like lifeline. We're about to be homeless. Like I've got a week and I need to sign like five clients and this one's got to become a client. That is like way too attached to energy, right? Do you think your clients can feel that? Serious question, yes or no? Leave a yes or a no in the comments. Do you think that if you have that energy, if you're like, they've gotta become a client, yes, I got someone. They're reaching out, they're asking about my coaching, they've gotta become a client. I know I can help her. Do you think that they can feel that? Yes or no in the comments? Are they gonna be able to tell when they're talking to you, when you're having a consult with them, or even if they just reach out and ask you a question about what you do? Do you think that that energy is something that they can feel, yes or no? This is huge. And so often we don't even know we're doing it because it's human nature, right? We care so much. We want this so bad. We want to be successful. And this is, our, this is our dream. This is our passion. And this is what we want to do. We want to coach people. We want to help people. And we also want to be successful in what we do. We want to have a successful coaching business. Like we want it so bad to our core, right? That's normal to feel that, right? To, to have that like self-focused energy that we've slipped into. It's like, They've got to become my client. I've got to help them. But if the client feels that, what do you think their reaction is going to be? Like, do you think they're going to be attracted to you, like magnetized to you? Or do you think they're going to feel some type of like, kind of like attachment energy, right? Think about it in the dating world. Think about if you were dating, right? And you this this is like the one person that you would talk to all week right and you hadn't even gone on a date yet like you haven't even like you just are lining it up you're gonna get coffee or something you're whatever the first date is gonna be but you haven't even gone on the date yet and you can feel that they're just like you know like we've got it like i'm looking for like exclusivity here like, do you, are we exclusive? I wanna know, are we in the gray area? Like, I don't do gray area. We gotta be like black and white. Are we together? Are you see, like, are you seeing other people, right? And you haven't even gone on the first date. Like you haven't had the consult with them yet. Are they gonna feel that attachment? Heck yes. They are totally gonna feel that. 
And it doesn't matter if you can totally help them because that energy is not attracting clients to you, right? It's, it's like a little bit intimidating to them. And think about your clients. They might not be super empowered. They might not be super confident to even talk about this problem. Maybe it's like uncomfortable for them to open up and share about it. And if they feel all of this attachment from you and it's like totally coming from a great place, but they're feeling that energy, it's totally not going to attract clients to you. So that is the third way that you are too attached. So you're either too attached to the way they're going to come. And so you're like not even seeing the clients that are already coming. You're just missing them over here. Or you're too attached to who that person is, right? The person. Or you're too attached to the outcome, of they've got to become a client. They've got to be that one. I They've got to sign up, right? That is being too attached. So we want to have low attachment. The clients are out there. They're looking for you right now. And the ones that are meant to be your clients are going to find you, right? That is the thought that you can choose to believe and have intention behind, right? The clients are coming. They are going to find me. And then your job is just to believe that you can help people, not have shiny object syndrome or squirrel brain, right? Where we're like going after everything except for showing up in service to our clients, right? And we're actually speaking about real problems. Like we're speaking to the core of like what they're suffering with and why they need to fix it. We're not being inspirational and cheerleading them and acting like they've got it. We're not their best friend who's just saying, hey, it's no problem that you have this big problem in your life. You're fine, you got this, just start today. We're not being inspirational, we're being coaches, right? We're not being wishy-washy because of a fear of like, the clients are never gonna come, we might lose someone that we could help if, we're, if we actually speak to the person who needs us right now. So not being wishy-washy, number four, and we're not gonna be attached. We're not gonna be attached to the way, the person, or the outcome. All right, my friends, those are the five deadly sins, right? That most coaches, all coaches, I would dare to say, have one of these. I've had all of them. So this is why I know them so well. I've had all of them. I've like done every single one of these. When I was first trying to figure out how on earth to get clients and why the clients aren't coming, start with number one investigate if you have number one. I, I, you would be surprised, even if you think you're like, no, I totally know I can help people. You would be surprised if you start paying attention to the thoughts, the, the thoughts in the back of your mind that you allow to be there and kind of like loop. Are those thoughts choosing with intentionality that you can help people? Start with number one. All right, my friends, was this helpful for you today? Let me know if these trainings are helpful for you. I'm always trying to think of what you guys need to hear that's going to help you show up and serve and make offers to the people who are looking for you right now. If you know how to help people, there's no reason for you to be sitting on your hands, not signing clients and helping people. That's why you're here on this earth to be a coach, to make a difference in your clients' lives, to actually sign clients so that you can help transform their lives let me know if this was helpful for you today. That would make my day to know that this was valuable for you. Let me know what else you want to hear. If you're on the replay, leave replay so I know that you're catching this and this was valuable for you as well. Let me know which one, one, two, three, four, or five, resonated with you the most. Um, or all of them, you can put one, two, three, four, and five. That would be me, I've had all of them. Let me know if this is helpful. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your night and a great weekend up ahead, and I will see you guys all next week. Bye-bye.